So we wanted to ask the question, could anyone actually use this system? So Jin Dong and I and Karen Fort, who is here today, um, uh, did a usability test to try to answer this question. The objective was we wanted to find out now if the current approach to searching corpora by a sparkle is not likely to be adapted. Um, and so our methodology for answering this question was a structured usability test. We asked users to complete a small number of tasks, and then we measured the percentage of users completing each task and the time to complete each task. So the interface, again, um, is um, basically a box for inputting a Sparkle query. But if you look down at the bottom of the screen, you'll notice that we also give a number of examples for how to do searches. And so our goal was that it should be possible to do a task by minimal edits of an example. So we gave people examples of very similar searches to the ones that we asked them to do in the task. And then um, our assumption was that they would edit the examples that we gave them. So um, we give them an example here, search for the word binds, and then we ask them to search for the word binding um, in our very, very most basic test. Um, so we had three subjects, um, five is um, often said to be the most optimal number for a usability study. Um, we put together a script with five tasks, we gave the subjects no training, just examples to look at, and then we measured the sub percentage of subjects that completed a task and the time to complete the task, and then asked them also to think aloud about what they were doing, and then we gave them a survey at the end. So the subjects that we selected were people at the hackathon, and there, there was actually, this is a very biased sample clearly, but we had a rationale for it. And the rationale was if people with natural language processing backgrounds at a hackathon on biomedical linked annotation can't use this interface, nobody can. So we gave them a number of tasks, from very simple ones to complex multi-layer tasks. So at the two ends of the spectrum, the first task we asked people to do was to search for examples of a word. The last task we asked them to do was to search for all examples of a particular syntactic construction that contained a particular semantic class of, of um, named entity. And so finding number one was that this did not happen to the experimenters, so we were kind of afraid that it might, given that um, we weren't completely sure that people could use Sparkle to do searches, but it almost did happen, actually. So um, we asked for people to search for examples of concepts uh, from a particular ontology, and um, this turned out to be uh, very problematic for people um, altogether. Um, when we looked at the completion rates for the five tasks, um, we, this is what we found. So I'm not calculating the mean because I don't even want to pretend that we have a large enough sample size here um, to give you statistics, but three out of three people um, could complete three of the five tasks, and the other two, um, two out of three, were able to complete. Um, and these are the response times for the five tasks. Um, the, the uppermost values here, I'm not sure if this is a pointer, um, these are, uh, if the, three, the completion time is 300 seconds, that means that they didn't complete the task. We gave a five minute limit for each one. Um, so what you'll notice is that um, in most cases people did complete the task. And what I think about is kind of interesting about this is that if you look at that really basic task that we had people start with to look for a word and you compare the time to complete that, this is in seconds, to the time to complete these last couple of tasks. And that fifth task, again, was pretty complex. It was searching across two different annotation um, layers. Uh, by, by the time they'd done five searches, not even five searches successfully, necessarily, um, everyone could do a pretty, pretty complex task in about the amount of time it initially took them to do that first very simple task. So people seem to learn to use the interface pretty quickly. Um, at the end, we gave people um, a set of three survey questions. We asked them on a scale from one, no previous experience, to seven, extensive professional experience, how would you describe your level of experience with Sparkle? And they actually didn't have that much, which um, I thought was interesting that they were still able to learn to do it. Um, uh, one person had uh, not seen a Sparkle query before doing this, and that was actually the fastest subject, so that subject um, 
very quickly adapted the examples versus the people who knew more about Sparkle, spent a lot of time looking at the examples um, and trying to tweak them. Um, we asked people on a scale from one very unlikely to seven very likely, how likely would you be to look further into this approach to searching in a corpus? This is probably the most surprising answer to me, that um, on a scale from one to seven, um, we got some numbers that were much larger than I would have expected. And then we asked people how they would primarily identify themselves, and all um, three of them identified themselves primarily as computer scientists. Um, was, uh, so clearly we need to look at people who are less computationally sophisticated as well. Um, so we'd like to thank Karen um, for running the experiments, our three anonymous subjects, and a very good book on user-centered design and DVCOS for uh, funding all of our participation.